You're watching KX News, putting North Dakota first. One of the first people KX News spoke with at the start of the pandemic joins us tonight more than two years later to talk about where things stand now. We welcome back Dr. Noe Mateo, an infectious disease specialist with Sanford Health. Dr. Mateo, it's good to see you again. Please be here. Now, Dr. Mateo, can you first uh, start by telling us a little bit about your background and how you got interested in your area of medicine? I trained to become an infectious disease specialist easily 35 years ago, and that's essentially on the basis of my interests in science, the fact that I had great mentors, and really it was a good way to take care of patients, people in a holistic manner, like the entire, instead of just one specific organ system. So I review all of this, and truth be told, it was in the middle of my residency that I woke up one morning and I decided, I'm going to be an infectious disease specialist. <laughs> really? Just like that. Just like that. Wow. <laughs> so, you know, we, we, here we are more than two years since the start of the pandemic. Where are we now? Uh, what do you believe people need to understand or understand better about the situation with uh, COVID-19? So SARS coronavirus 2, since the first SARS virus came along easily uh, 15 years or so ago, this particular virus is here to stay and it's not going to go anywhere mainly because the natural host turns out to be not just people, but other animals, deer, cats. So it's gonna be out there in the wild and it's gonna potentially travel back and forth between animals and, and people. Now, it's very contagious and we've seen that over the last couple of years. So there, you can expect that to be rampant and throughout the world, it's a pandemic, uh, and potentially with a seasonal characteristic, much like influenza. It's considerably more severe in terms of the illness that it can cause. But fortunately, now we have vaccines and we have medications to treat acute infection. So we're in a much better place this time around versus two years ago. Two years ago, when the first wave came, we were really desperate within the medical field. Hospitals were being inundated. Uh, we didn't know exactly how to proceed with treatment. And unfortunately, what we could rely upon in terms of public health messaging was not well conveyed. Mm -hmm. And now you mentioned that we're in a better place than we were two years ago. What needs to happen next for us to get through this pandemic? I think people still need to keep in mind basic principles of infection control, public health, hand washing, social distancing, masking. None of that's going to go away. And potentially it'll be something that has to be repeatedly instituted, perhaps not mandated, but strongly recommended wherever you go. The pandemic is not well controlled in other countries, Africa, South America. So we're talking about people still having to wear masks if they fly internationally. Uh, you know, once the vaccine rolls out uh, to a much greater extent, then we can anticipate that uh, the epidemic, the pandemic will be under better control. And under that circumstance, business, schools, life should come back closer to normal. But it's hard to say just how quickly that's gonna occur it's uh, hard to say whether it's going to occur simultaneously, no matter what part of the country you look at. And so it's still a very dynamic situation. Speaking of which, we're just getting into the summer months now, but looking ahead towards the fall and the winter, what are you seeing? What are you uh, and, and your colleagues possibly looking at as far as a, a potential uh, fall wave or winter wave? I think we've learned to expect the unexpected. Mm. So the point here is that it's a good bet that there will be another wave because it's at that time that the temperature outdoors gets cooler, people start congregating indoors, and once you have crowding and you have more opportunity for viral spread that way. I think the deal then is the virus isn't sitting still either, so it's continuing to evolve. And potentially it's involving in the, the general population that's unvaccinated, it's potentially involving evolving in, in folks who have a chronic type of infection because their immune system just isn't, isn't able to contain it and control it and eradicate it as well. So the virus is going to keep developing these mutations that potentially makes it more dangerous, more contagious, uh, uh, and potentially more lethal. But we'll have to see. The best weapons that we have are vaccinations and medications. We're better armed now. We're better equipped to deal with all of that. And so it'll be an ongoing struggle. Dr. Mateo, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, my pleasure.